necessity to be in the, ho in the house of the Lord and to share with the word of God with you on tonight. God has been blessing us throughout this series of lessons, and we are praying that tonight he will continue to do so, that we will be encouraged by our lesson and realize uh, that God is on our side. Tonight, I want to talk to you about our refuge and strength. Our lesson, uh, scripture lesson will be coming from 2 Kings, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 3. And I'll read that now. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abai, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David, his father, did. By the scripture that I read, you probably know that Hezekiah would be the main character in our lesson on tonight. We will see through Hezekiah's reign that God is our refuge and God is our strength. Now, Hezekiah was the new king. No doubt he watched as his father was buried and realized that the kingdom would now be his. He would be the king of Judah. The, the amazing thing uh, would be how different he would rule from what his father Ahaz ruled. He did not, uh, his father Ahaz was a wicked king. He did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He worshiped the gods of the surrounding nations, even offered children as burnt offerings unto those false gods. Ahaz went so far as to destroy the vessels of the house of the Lord, and his actions uh, angered God. He destroyed those vessels, but here's where he hindered the people of God. He closed the house of the Lord, did not allow worship in the temple anymore. This was his way of trying to be um, rebelling against God, but also take the entire nation of Judah in with him rebelling against God. So Ahaz's actions angered God. And right in the height of his idolatry, at the age of 36, he died. He only reigned for 16 years. Now, if you compare that to um, King David and King Solomon, they both reigned for about 40 years each as king. But Ahaz only reigned for 16 years because of his rebellion and because uh, God did not give him the protection that he gave to David and Solomon. So he lost his life in a battle with a foreign country. Now, listen, most of us, or maybe all of us, have heard this saying. You are a product of your environment. Now, I believe there is some truth in this saying. But King Hezekiah proves without a shadow of a doubt that through God and your determination, you can overcome the influences of your environment. Now, when I use that term product of your environment, it means that a, as a person, the person that you are is a direct result of how you grew up. The environment you were brought up in continues now to influence the decisions you make. So it is said that your environment makes you who you are. And, and consider this, Ahaz's actions as king was total rebellion against God. 
He was required now as king, as a king by God, to have a copy of the law, to read it daily, so that he would fear the Lord, and that and all the words that God had spoke, he was to obey. And not only that, but all of the statutes that God had put in place, he was to obey those. And not only he was to obey, but he was to lead the nation in obeying God. But Ahaz did something very different from that. He refused to do the things that God required of him. But listen, Ahaz is not just Hezekiah's father, but He's also the king, which means that there's a tremendous amount of influence for Hezekiah to be like his father and to learn how to do life from his father, which would include things like this. What would you believe in life? Is there a God or who is God? And also, how would you handle relationships? And what do you view as success? And what are the things in life that you have set for a goal? Uh, and in Hezekiah's um, case, how or what type king would you be in Judah? Now, all of these things would have uh, taken in some influences from his father. But now remember, his father is a wicked king and uh, he has disappointed God, but left to just his environment only, it is suggested that Hezekiah would have simply followed in his father's footsteps and Israel would have missed out on one of the best kings in their history. But I want to say this, somehow God was able to override Hezekiah environmental issues and lifting them up to a to a higher standard. Now, I don't know where or by what means, but Hezekiah had an encounter with God and he was convinced that he would follow God. And this is how he broke the power of the environmental influences in his life. Uh, Hezekiah, uh, everyone or uh, most people would have thought Hezekiah is going to be the same type king as his father. Everyone probably would have been saying we have another reign of this same kind of leadership because that's where the averages or the odds are. That if you're in a family that does things a certain way, if your father did them a certain way, then normally you would do things that same way or the beliefs that the father had was passed on to his children uh, and they took on basically the same beliefs. But as I said earlier, somehow God spoke with Hezekiah, sent a message, sent the prophet or uh, someone influenced him and said, this is not the way to be king. This is not what God desires. And guess what? It stuck with Hezekiah. So once his father passed, Hezekiah had a whole new thing in mind for the kingdom of Judah. Now, I want to do a sidebar right here. Sidebar, that's a court term where um, the judge and maybe the lawyers, they will have a meeting. It's not the trial, but they would meet about the trial and where the judge might give some, um, elaborate some of what he wants in his courtroom, uh, how he will allow the case to go, or maybe he will encourage the, uh, uh, the lawyers on each side. Let's keep this thing, um, as calm as possible. We don't want a chaotic courtroom. But anyway, a sidebar was a talk from the from the judge, maybe to the uh, lawyers. And it didn't really represent the case because the jury was not allowed to be in that meeting. So I want to do a sidebar. But in this case, it would be your teacher for tonight. And then all those people who have been told that it is highly unlikely 
that you will be successful, but that you are destined to fail. And why? Because there has been failure in your family or because of your parents situation. Maybe you you have parents who um, was abusive toward you or parents that had addictions as you was growing up. You lived in a tough neighborhood. Uh, you were you were taught to commit crimes, all these things. Um, your family had problems with alcohol, all these things in life. If you one of those people come to this sidebar and here's what I want to tell you just between us. Listen, Hezekiah was in your shoes. Or worse, his father was horrible. He did not just break the laws of man, but he broke the laws of God. Now, every Israelite was charged to keep the law including the king, everyone was supposed to follow the law of God. But Ahaz rebelled and he did not allow Israel to follow God or Judah to follow God as they should have by the things that he would do. So remember, he closed the temple, which left the priests unemployed and ineffective. So the people of Judah was without the services of the temple. Now, remember, the temple was where they worshiped God and it's also where they heard from God. So this was Ahaz's attempt to completely cut off the relationship between Judah and the true and living God. Hezekiah's father intentionally did this. He intentionally tried to get the people to lose their focus on God and to focus in on the false God. So because Ahaz simply did not want to obey the laws of God, he put not only himself in danger, but the entire nation of Judah in danger of losing God's favor, losing God's protections, and of course, losing the blessings of God. Because one thing God requires from all who will follow him is obedience to his word. So Ahaz has put everybody in a predicament here. He served uh, the various gods of the surrounding nations. Whatever God they serve, Israel would try that. God. It, Ahaz would try that God. And whatever was required, then he would try to do those things in Judah. This angered God. He, he closed the temple. He set up altars for the uh, worship of idol gods. He set up the high places to worship the idol gods. All these things he did in order that he could feel um, comfortable in serving these other gods because he would bring the whole nation of Judah along with him. Now, this was the environment that Hezekiah was raised in. We will not serve that true God or the God of Israel. These other gods that Ahaz was serving, um, their doctrine was a lot of times was simply this. Pleasure your flesh. Do the things that you desire to do. And it was so much ingrained in those other gods. It was a part of the rituals that should have been carried out to serve or honor those gods. So the things that God, the true God restricted were the very things that these other gods proclaimed to be a part of the, their faith or a part of their beliefs. So in other words, here's what happened. These false gods were set up basically to distract the true worshipers and to disconnect them from their God. And it gave them things to do that they were restricted from doing by the true God. So in other words, it was just something set up and designed by the devil in order to distract God's people. This was the environment that Hezekiah was in. But I want you tonight to be inspired by this young King Hezekiah who broke the mold of his father 
and led Judah back to the true gods. In other words, he had success. He was not a product of his environment. And listen, I don't care how many people telling you, you stuck with this. This is what your family has done for years. This is what you know to do. This is how we conduct ourselves as family. But I want to say to you, there is a way for you to break the influences of your environment, especially when you can see for yourself your environment is not leading you to where you want to go. It's not leading you to that type of life that you desired. Hezekiah somehow had it in his heart. This is really not what I want for Judah. This is not what I see as being successful. Even though this is what my father, who is the king, is doing now, I don't see this as successful. So listen, Hezekiah, along with the entire nation of, of Judah, was being bombarded with the idea of abandoning Jehovah, which was the true God, to worship the God of the nations by King Ahaz. It seemed like this has become the biggest purpose for his kingdom was to lead them away from God to the idol, God, idol gods. But after the death of Ahaz and Hezekiah becomes king, I want you to see what he does here. In the first month of his reign, he reopened the doors of the house of the Lord. He then bring in the priests and the Levites and tell them, sanctify yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord. In other words, make yourself ready to do service in the house of the Lord and then prepare the house of the Lord and make sure everything is prepared there. Get rid of all the things that my father has bought in that does not represent God. Clean, the, clean this temple up. Clean yourselves up. Begin to um, hear what God is saying because he, Hezekiah told the priests, God is ready to use you. In fact, he said, God has chosen you to help turn this nation around. Now, mind you, Hezekiah is 25 years old. He's a young man. He takes over as king and he goes in the opposite direction from what his environmental influences was, tell, was telling him. He begins to reestablish worship for the temple. He prepared, tells the priests to prepare themselves. And then when he opens the door of the house of the Lord to his uh, pleasure and delight, the people in Judah are ready to return. In fact, he asks for offering to be taken in order to get everything right within the temple. And he's told by the priest says, we are collecting too much money. It's way above the amount that we need. So this was exciting for Hezekiah. Uh, he was willing to uh, turn it, Judah around and bring them back to the position where God had planned and organized for them to be. But his father had taken them in the wrong direction. So I want to say this. Hezekiah should have been a product of his environment, but he was not because Hezekiah would hear God speaking and he wanted to make a change. Hezekiah could see through God's power that what was going on in Judah was not profiting Judah. And he wanted to do something else. So he heard from God and he saw the results of what his father was doing, that it brought pain, it brought defeat, and it made things worse. Things were not getting better. So here's what he said. He said, in my heart, I want to make a covenant with God. That, that was what Hezekiah wanted as king. I want to make a covenant with God. 
Now, I'm not sure if he was considering um, renewing the covenant that God had already made with Israel um, when he first established the law and how he told them that if you will be my people, then I will be your God. In other words, whatever you need, I will provide it for you as long as you are being my people. Now, being God's people, what does that mean? Simply means this, that I will honor God and I will obey God. So Hezekiah then, after reopening the temple, the house of the Lord and establishing worship at the temple, his next move was he called for the removal of all the places that were set up for the worship of false gods. The high places, the altars, they all were removed. And Hezekiah had it in his heart that we will serve the true and living God and we will trust that he alone would be our refuge and our strength. Now you tell me, was Hezekiah a product of his environment? I don't think so. I, in fact, I know he was not. So listen, but Hezekiah took years <clears throat> to get this reform into place. Hezekiah was in his 14th year as king of Judah. And you would think that Hezekiah is doing uh, all that he can to restore Judah's relationship with God. And yes, God was pleased with what Hezekiah was doing. He was blessing Hezekiah, but you would think Hezekiah would have had years and years of peace. But listen, Hezekiah's belief has to be proven to be correct. And what am I saying about this is the Bible says that after these things, in other words, after Hezekiah established the use of the temple again, brought the priests back in line, tore down all the places of the idol worship, then this is what happened. This second Chronicles 32 and one says, after these things and the establishment thereof, Sennacherib, king of Asia, Assyria, came and entered into Judah and encamped against the fenced cities and thought to win them for himself. What happened? The Assyrians thought it was good for them now to come and attack Judah. If you know anything about your history, if you, uh, you probably have heard about this king. He had one of the most powerful armies there were in that time. And he had been, the, it, uh, the Assyrians had been out conquering nations for a while now, not just this king, but the kings before him. And now they are threatening, not only just threatening, but they are encamped around the cities of Judah, ready to come in and try to take over that land. And uh, so after all these reforms and all that, that Hezekiah had done, this is what happened. So the word came to the king concerning the attack. It says the Assyrians have launched an attack against our kingdom. Sennacherib had a very powerful army, a very powerful army. It was no way that Judah could compare, or army could compare to the Assyrian's army. So listen, Hezekiah tried to appease the king by sending him a peace offering. He sent silver and gold, hoping that Hezekiah would accept that and would discontinue the attack. But listen, the king of Assyria sent Hezekiah a, a message in the form of a letter. And this is what he says. He says, do not let your God in whom you trust deceive thee, saying that Jerusalem shall be, not be delivered into the hands of the Assyrians. So you have heard of the, what the kings of Assyria have done to all the lands by destroying them utterly. So he asked 
Hezekiah this question. He says, you think you will be delivered? And he says this, have the gods of the other nations delivered them? <clears throat> this was really something to shake Hezekiah's faith. He was saying that uh, you think your God is going to deliver you. Well, the gods of these other nations were not able to deliver them. So don't be deceived by your God thinking that he will deliver you. But I want to tell you, Hezekiah had something. Hezekiah went into prayer. And in his prayer, he asked the Lord, he says, I want you to see and hear the words of Sennacherib, how he discredited you, God. But another thing Hezekiah did, even before he started praying, he took the letter that Sennacherib had sent to him. And he put it in the house of the Lord, open face. And so when he started praying, he invited God to look at this letter and see how this king is discrediting you by saying you cannot deliver your people. And Hezekiah continues to pray and he says, it is true. God, that the, the kings of Assyria have been successful. They have destroyed other nations and, and taken over their lands and have cast their gods in the fire. But Hezekiah said, but I know their gods were just uh, works of man's hands. But Hezekiah believes in his God and he says, now, therefore, Lord, our God, save thou us out of his hands that all the nations of the earth will know that thou art God, even thou only. You are God all by yourself. <clears throat> I love what happens after this. God sends Isaiah the prophet to Hezekiah, and he told him this, that the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow, nor, become, nor come before it with shield, he shall not enter the city. By the way he came, shall he return. And he says again, he shall not come into this city. And why? This is why. For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. So listen, it seemed like a big negative situation happening for Hezekiah. But as it turns out, God proves to Hezekiah the kind of relationship that you wanted with God. The reason you did your reforms and turned Judah back was you wanted relationship with God. You wanted an agreement with God. You wanted a covenant, as you have said in your heart, I want a covenant with God. Well, God established the covenant because Judah turned back to God, obeying God, worshiping God, and God returned back to his place as I am the God of Judah. So when Sennacherib, the Assyrian army came in, God played his role. I am your God because you have returned back to being my people. And so when he tries to enter, I will not even allow him with his vast army to even step foot in the city. Not one arrow will he shoot into this city because I will defend you. Why did God do this for Judah? Was because Hezekiah would not be a product of his environment. Hezekiah stepped out on God and said, I'm going to do something different from my father because I long for that relationship with God. I could not have it during my father's reign because my father closed down the temple. Now, let me show you how effective that was. When Ahaz closed the temple, what happened? Well, the temple was a huge part of Israel's worship. Remember all those pieces to the temple? 
the, the brazen altar, the Holy of Holies, all those places were um, part of the worship that was supposed to happen. So when Ahaz closed those temple, closed the temple down, how would the people then worship God? But Hezekiah said, the first thing I'm going to do when I become king is reestablish the temple so that we can go back to observing the Day of Atonement and the Feast of God and the things that he told us to continue to do, which involved the temple. So what happened? Because one guy said, I will break the mold. I will not be influenced by what my father did when I know there is something better. And he took that step, turned Judah around, and then he positioned Judah to once again be God's people. And it positioned them to have the true God as their God. So this did not lead to defeat, but it led Judah to victory. What I'm saying to all of us is, look, we do not have to follow after the weight of the world. We do not have to follow people who showed us the incorrect way to do things. But we can get connected to God and find out that we can go down another road. We can go where God really wants us to go. No one is restricted from following God. God will come and be a part of your life regardless to how you was raised up, what part of town you lived in, how much money your family had. There is no restriction that can kill the relationship that God want to have with you except that you will not accept it. Hezekiah accepted what he heard from God. Somebody told him, we need to do this differently, and God is not pleased. So as soon as he became king, he did it differently, and God blessed him. When the armies came in, when his father was king, as I said earlier, his father died due to the fact that they were being attacked by another nation and lost, and he lost his life. But Hezekiah did things different, and God did things different for Hezekiah. When the Assyrians came, God says, no, nah, he won't step foot in your city. I promise you that, because why? I'm your God, and you have turned these people back to me, so do something positive. Hezekiah did the right thing, and he goes down in history as one of the best kings ever for Israel. Uh, he did things so correctly, even when God sent the prophet to Hezekiah and said, Hezekiah, get your house in order, you're about to die. Well, you know what Hezekiah did? He said, now God, haven't I been the kind of king you wanted me to be? And I'm just not ready to die. And God granted Hezekiah another 15 years. Why? Because Hezekiah broke away from his environmental influences to follow God. And he led Judah to do the very same thing. So listen, whoever you are, whatever you've been facing in life, you can break away from that mold to do the right thing and to do something for God and to bring blessings in your life and not end up as others have following the path that your influences are now trying to take you down. Do something different. Hear from God and try God as Hezekiah did. I'm going to turn this nation around and look what God did for him. No, you would not be defeated because I am your God. Thank you, God, for this lesson. I hope that it has been something that will encourage others to follow you and to not receive the message or not believe that they are in a predicament that they cannot improve or they're in a place that condemns them forever, that they will never have victory. But I hope that they will realize through this lesson that they can have victory through you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you just for visiting us and for being in this lesson on tonight. 
And I'm praying that people will be encouraged when they hear it, that they will know that you can give them a better life if they will break the mold and not follow the path of their environment. We thank you, oh God, for all of those who have heard your word and are wondering now which way to go. But I pray that you will bless them, that they will follow the path to you and that they will be uh, worshipers of you and you will be their God and they will see the benefits of following and serving you. Father, on tonight, we remember those who are on our prayer list, who have continued to ask for prayer for their situations, for healing from sicknesses and disease, from, for healing from depression and healing, oh God, from oppression. We are praying for those, oh God, who are going through bereavement of the loss of loved ones, oh God. We pray that you will find a way to encourage their hearts on tonight and allow them to continue with life, oh God, and to lean on you for support. Oh God, be praying, oh God, for those, oh God, who are just in a miserable way, who, who really don't know what's next in life. What, what should they do? Which path should they follow, oh God? I pray that you will help them in making correct decisions and that they will follow after you. We just thank you for all things, oh God, and we pray that you will continue to bless us and be with us as we travel through in life, oh God, trying to do the things that are pleasing in your sight. Amen and amen.